If you want to become a DevOps engineer, SR engineer, or a cloud engineer, you definitely have to know at least one cloud service provider, whether it is AWS, Azure, or GCP. If you are confused which one to pick, I have done a video on that. You can watch that video. I have given my recommendation. So let's say now if you want to pick AWS, and if you look at the console itself, there are about 200 plus services and in Azure 250 odd services and similarly in GCP. So in this video, I'm going to tell you what are the key services that you have to learn to become a DevOps engineer or an SRE engineer. If you are new to this channel, my name is GK and I have been associated with DevOps and cloud since 2013 and I have been part of the digital transformation. So if you like this kind of content, do subscribe to this channel. Now the common question that people ask me GK I want to transition from so and so role and I have to learn cloud but where should I start or what are the different kind of services that I have to focus on and I'll give you only specific services that you should definitely focus on and there are a lot of exceptions for this like for example if you are a software developer trying to learn cloud then your focus is totally different or for example if you are a data engineer uh, and now you are trying to learn cloud or trying to pick some services in cloud, then you need to pick different services based on your background, similarly for network engineer. But here I'm talking about what services you have to learn if you want to become SRE or a DevOps engineer. Now there are a lot of overlaps with DevOps and SRE, there is only mindset change and the other things will, will come into play. But as far as cloud services are concerned, it's same whether you want to become cloud engineer, SRE engineer or a DevOps engineer. So we are strictly following Pareto's principle, which is 80-20 rule. We are going to focus on 20% of the services that would help us to crack the interview and your chances of cracking the interview will be 90%. I'm sure there are exceptions and there might be 10% here and there, but 90% of the time you'll only get these services in your interview. So I'm going to break it down into multiple categories. The first category is compute. In any company, the first service or the bare minimum service that they're going to use is EC2 instance. For example, for AWS, it is EC2 and for GCP, it is compute engine. Uh, you can relate that to any other cloud service provider, whether it is Azure or OCP uh, or OCI. So EC2 instance is EC2 service is definitely something that you have to learn. Like for example, how you spin up EC2 or how you use EC2s, um, different kinds of, how, how you're going to use different kinds of EC2s like memory optimized or CPU optimized or GPU optimized based on different workloads. So this is something that you have to know. Another service is Lambda functions, which I've used a lot in my career. Lambda functions are also called as a function as a service or FAS. So Lambda, Cloud Functions, or Cloud Run, or different variants of serverless compute is something that you're going to use a lot as a cloud engineer. Another service in the serverless compute is ECS. But if they have a huge microservice-based application and there is a need for EKS, then they would go with EKS. If not, a lot of companies use ECS. So don't forget to learn ECS. Now coming to the storage, S3, you have to learn definitely different kinds of S3 storages and lifecycle management and how to secure, why do you have to use S3? So these are the common things that you would also expect in the interview and how you can store uh, into S3 from serverless functions or from EC2 instances, another common practice that companies follow. So S3 is another important service that you have to learn. Now, while I'm going through these services, if you think I have missed any service that you are extensively working, in your company, then let me know in the comment section. The next category is databases. Now in the databases, you should definitely know how to provision PostgreSQL and uh, how to use scalable databases, how to store the backups and how to manage like even MySQL for instance. So basically the managed SQL is going to be very important because whenever you work as a DevOps engineer, you have to set up end-to-end -end application in cloud and database plays a crucial role in that. And uh, as far as security is concerned, IAM, you have to know how to create different policies and different roles in any cloud. And you should know at least bare minimum how to connect different services using IAM policies. For example, in AWS, how to connect from EC2 instance to database without password. What is the IAM policy that you have to define? So these are the things that you have to understand. And also the concepts of principle of least privilege, because whenever you give permissions to anybody, you have to follow the PLP because you don't want to give broad permissions to that developer. You have to give only specific permissions and combine that into role and then give that role permission to the developer. Now, uh, there are exceptions again here, because if you are working in a big company, like an enterprise company, then you might not get permissions or you might not even get access to IAM to give different permissions 
permissions. So you might only work on the compute layer. Uh, but if you're working in a startup, then you will definitely have to work on IAM because you have to give permissions for developers. In the CI/CD tools, there are companies who might use the cloud-based CI/CD tools like Cloud Build, etc. But usually they would use something outside of the cloud, which is GitLab CI/CD or Jenkins. In any case, uh, if you see an opportunity, try to invest your time, but don't spend a lot of time in this area. Uh, it's not worth spending a lot of time. Just understand the concepts because most of the time, whether you learn Jenkins or GitLab CI/CD, those will apply in the cloud-based CI/CD platforms as well. Monitoring and logging is something that you have to focus a lot because whenever there are issues with respect to any service, you have to understand, let's say in the AWS, how to look at CloudTrail logs or how to look at CloudWatch logs. And uh, if there is a managed Prometheus service, then how you're going to manage that. This is within the cloud, but outside of the cloud also, you have to know how to set up ELK stack or Prometheus outside of the cloud and observability tools or Datadog, etc. But I'm not going to cover that in this video because this is specifically focusing on what are the services that you have to know within the cloud. So coming to IAC, a lot of companies use CloudFormation in AWS, obviously, but there are not so mature services in GCP, so they might use Terraform, which is outside of the cloud, but GCP also offers Terraform as a service. So definitely learn Terraform if you want to learn GCP. If you want to learn AWS as well, learning Terraform will help you a lot, but AWS has its own managed service, which is CloudFormation, learn that, and Azure also has its own managed service. So pro tip is that focus on creating small projects that you can showcase on your resume. So that's what recruiters look for. And that also help you to debug a lot of other issues when you are practicing these services. And uh, that way it will help you to crack the interviews much better. And then you can also expand yourself into bigger projects deploying onto EKS. For example, a small project could be deploying a fast API based service in the Lambda function or similarly in the compute engine and then connect that to the database or drop files into the cloud storage from that using the API. So these are the small things that you can start with and then you can expand yourself into the bigger projects. Now the other way is invest your time into the certifications of that cloud service provider. Like for example, whatever services that I spoke about, you will see mostly these services as part of your AWS DevOps engineer certification as well. With the fundamentals of CI CD, with the fundamentals of how to do blue green deployments using auto scaling groups, etc., with EC2 and other compute services. So these are the things that they ask. So even if you go through those certifications, uh, that will help you to practice and learn these services in a structured way. Similarly with Azure DevOps or similarly with, with GCP as well. So if you want to get into DevOps or SRE roles, then focus on only these certifications. Don't right away start with AWS SA or uh, GCP professional architect certifications. So I hope you have understood what are the main services that you should focus and don't try to learn everything in the cloud just focus on these services spend your time wisely and put these things on your resume i'm sure you will definitely try to answer in the interview and crack the interview and i wish you all good luck with your interviews and if you have any further questions related to this or any further feedback that you would like to give let me know in the comment section thank you all for watching this video bye